So now let's go ahead and talk about the IUPAC nomenclature of Alkine. Let's put IUPAC in here. <clears throat> and so what happens if we wanted to be able to uh, generate a systematic IUPAC name for this molecule that contains an, uh, an alkyne functional group. Well, we're going to want to follow the same kinds of uh, processes that we've used for naming other molecules with the IUPAC nomenclature. First, we're going to want to identify uh, and name the parent chain. And then we're going to want to identify and name any substituents. And in three, we're going to want to assign locants. And those are the, the numbers that indicate where everything is to the, to the carbon atoms in the parent chain. And finally, then we're going to want to assemble the name. <clears throat> this really just follows the same, oops, let's, let's make this a little bit bigger. The same process that we would use uh, to name or generate the IUPAC name of any kind of molecule. Uh, so let's go ahead and start uh, stepping through the process. So here is our alkyne uh, again. Now we're going to figure out the parent chain. And if you were looking at this molecule and doing what you are used to doing for molecules without alkyne functional groups, you might identify this chain of carbon atoms as the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 carbon atoms in that chain. And it is the longest uh, continuous chain of carbon atoms. And if we were naming this molecule as if it were an alkane, we would call this some kind of undecane. The problem is, is that doesn't help us recognize that this is an alkyne, that there's an alkyne functional group in this molecule. And so as you start to name molecules that have other functional groups in them, uh, and one of the more important rules to remember is that the parent chain needs to contain uh, those functional groups in it so that the uh, name of the molecule can reflect that it has those other functional groups. So the parent chain needs to contain the alkyne. Uh, and there are two possible parent chains that contain the alkyne. This one that I've got highlighted is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 carbons. And this one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 carbons. So it turns out, in either case, uh, we're going to have a nine carbon parent chain. Uh, and it turns out this case, both parent chains would be the same. I'm going to go ahead and highlight this parent chain in red so that we can uh, know which one we're talking about. And we're going to name that parent chain. So since the parent chain uh, has nine carbons in it, if it were an alkane, we would name it no name, but because it has an alkyne in it, we replace the A with a Y. So this is some kind of no nine. Uh, I'm gonna take my no nine and uh, I do it this way. Text atom. All right, I'm having trouble labeling it in red. Let's let's real one last thing. There we go, labeling it in red. And then this substituent here has one, two, three, four, five carbons on it in a straight line. This is the pentyl substituent. Uh, and I don't want the pentyl substituent in red. I want the pentyl substituent in black, which is there we go. So now here we have a pentyl chain that is a no nine, nine carbon atoms containing the alkyne and a substituent uh, pentyl attached to it. Now we need to assign uh, locants to the parent chain to help us figure out one, where the alkyne is, and two, when we assemble the name, where this pentyl group is. Now, 
as always, there's more than one way the locants can be assigned to the parent chain, which is why I've got the structure drawn twice on this screen. And so I could assign the locants so that carbon number one is on the leftmost side uh, and carbon number nine is at the right end of the chain, or I could assign the locants the opposite way so that carbon number one is on the right and carbon number nine is on the left. And if you remember from the nomenclature of alkanes and you know, you want to set this up so that the substituents have the lowest possible locants, but we also want to set the situation up so that the functional group uh, that we're talking about also has the lowest possible locants. And so in this case, you know, the structure on the bottom has uh, the alkyne with locants two and three, or the one on the top has the alkynes with seven and eight. So we want to choose the numbering scheme on the bottom because it gives the alkyne the lowest numbered locants. It also happens to give the substituent the lowest numbered locant, but in this particular case, we don't care about that. The alkyne uh, wins. Finally, now let's go and uh, assemble our name. So we have uh, our locants assigned here. We have, if you remember, uh, I want to draw a box around those. I want to copy these two things uh, and bring them over to this page so we can look at them. We have a parent chain uh, with the name nonine. We have a substituent with the name pentol. We've assigned our locants. So we can go ahead and start typing out the name of this molecule. And as always, we put the substituents at the beginning. So this is 4-pentyl, no 9. Except we need to put a locant in here that tells us where the no 9, where the ine in no 9 is. It can be 1, no 9, 2, 9, 9, 3, and so on. And so this alkyne functional group starts at carbon 2 and goes to carbon 3. We only need the 2 as the locant telling us where the ine and no nine is because we the alkyne requires two carbons and so if we give it the first one the next one in the list has to be the second carbon of the alkyne so if we say two no nine that tells us we have uh, an alkyne in our structure that starts at carbon two and goes to carbon three it's also perfectly legitimate to call this four pentyl known two ine uh, to put the two right in front of the ions uh, infix to uh, uh, be explicitly clear that that two and two no nine is referring to the alkyne functional group. It might be easier to say four pentyl two no nine, but the second name uh, starts to be clearer once you have more functional groups in the molecule. But both of these names are perfectly fine uh, for this molecule. In the next video, we'll do some additional examples, uh, including a molecule that has more than one alkyne in its structure. Stay tuned.